Hello everyone and welcome to a tutorial video. In this episode we are going to be talking about squid farms and all of the mechanics behind them. Squid farms in 1.16 are actually very easy to put together and in the past black dye has been one of the most difficult things to come across but it is now no longer that difficult as long as you understand the mechanics behind it. So I've put up a couple spheres here to explain how these squid farms work and the glass here is what I'm going to show on representing the river biome which is what we want for squid spawns. So rivers often run through things like plains and forests and they're the easiest place to farm squid. In the ocean you have to remove so much water so you don't want to do it there you want to do it in a river biome. So River biomes are not even. What you want to do first is find the water of the river and you want to find a place where there is no oceans within 128 blocks around it. So that is the green sphere. The green sphere represents where we have to take water out from. So that much around the entire farm is where we have to take water out from. Now it seems like a lot but it's not actually that much because rivers meander for a little bit and peter off. So taking out that amount of water is not a big deal. Uh, the second sphere is the AFK sphere. So everything within this sphere can spawn things like cod and salmon, and we don't want those things. So when we're AFKing for a farm like this, we wanna make sure that we're outside of this sphere. But the first thing you wanna do is find the river biome, find the biggest section inside of it where you can place the different modules for this farm and then you want to remove the water from everywhere else and here as well. Uh, so you want to clear water in this radius and then what you're left with is this section and what you want to do is mark it out either like this or another way just so that you still know where the river is and then you want to plot out the size of your farm. Now this farm works uh, in a sort of plus fact fashion. So every other block, it can be a source for spawning squid like this. So this would probably be a good layout for this orientation. Now squid are able to spawn between Y46 and 62. So those are the most important numbers to keep in mind. Now. The way that we get them to spawn and the way that we eventually kill them is by at the bottom of the spawning area, so down at Y45, one below, we place a fence gate. So in this case, that would be here. And then one higher up on all sides, we place another fence gate. So we don't need the ones down here. We just need the ones in the very bottom. And then we open all the fence gates and then we count our way up to Y62. Now you don't need to count up like this because in your world there would still be blocks to place against. But just for example here we get our way up to Y62 and then what we do is we place in a water source. Now what we want to have here and I didn't do it there is solid blocks on all sides of the very top water source and then what you will see happens is it will become one column of water just like this and then you have another column here another column there and the only reason it went like this is because I messed up in the beginning. Once that falls down, I will show you for real. So you wanna have these on all sides and then you can drop your water in and it will plunge down and go into, I let that go too early still, but it will just go into the center of where your fence gates are. Just like that. And then it's a water column. Nothing else matters here, it just stops like that. And then you have one of those for each of these blocks. So you would have another fence gate low here, high here, high here, and then make sure that they're all open. And then you could have another water source here now. So you'll see for real this time, the water source will drop 
it will go in and it won't be a problem. So just like that. And you want to have those for each one. And then when squids spawn in here, which they will quite often once you're up in your AFK area, they will spawn in the water and then eventually they will fall out of the water and fall down. Now that's difficult to show here, but we can sort of force it to happen a little bit. So you can see there the squid, if I put them in here, eventually they will fall their way out of the water, fall to the ground, and they will die. So basically the only other thing you have to do other than this right here is dig down a little bit and then place some hoppers and all you do is place hoppers and then you put a slab on top of the hopper, any type of slab, so that anything that is dropped down there is picked up by the hopper. And that is the complete design for the farm. Then you just have to make sure that you AFK 64 blocks above so that no salmon or cod or anything for the biome can spawn in the farm itself. And this farm is done. It is that simple. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop into an actual world and I'm gonna show you sort of the layout of a river and I'm going to build one up really simply just to show you exactly how this works. So here we are now in the world and we found a great river biome for this. It is quite skinny in the sections outside of it so it will be easy to get rid of the water and there is a large enough section here to put the squid farm together. So what you wanna do is go into F3 mode. Uh, so F3 on a PC and function F3 on a Mac. And you want to find the boundaries of the river. So as you go, you can see on the left side of my screen, this block is river. This one is plain. So this is river. And then you basically want to go along and mark out how big this river biome actually is. And you'll get a strange shape. Uh, it will not be perfect and it can vary like look at this even the river is up on land here in this one for quite a ways this is all river see this is river this is river and then it goes to plains this one's river plains plains this one's river and you want to go along and sort of mark out the bounding box of your river so that you can figure out the farm so i'm just going to mark this one out and then i will come back so as you can see the size of the river can actually be quite strange over here this is forest over here where there's still water and it looks like a river this is uh, forest as you can see and this box that I have laid out here is all river, even some of this land over here. So you really have to be careful to look at the screen and make sure that everything that's inside your farm is river. So the next thing that you want to do is start removing water and you want to remove it all the way 128 blocks away from this farm. The easiest way to do it is with sponges, which you can now dry out in the nether. So it is easier than ever to do this. And you want to get 128 blocks away from the farm in all river biomes. So if you end up with, um, what is it, those little tiny lakes that you can see spawn in your world, those are okay as long as they're not a river biome because nothing is going to spawn in them. But anywhere that says river does need to go to the full distance away of 128 blocks. So I would measure it out and see if this over here needed to be taken out. It probably does. And then you also need to do it in the same way this way. These are what I was talking about. So see, this is just plains. It's not a river. So this water actually doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be removed because nothing passive water mob style can spawn in it. Guardians are a different cap. So and you're never going to be building this near guardians anyway but passive water mobs have their own cap so the regular mob cap does not affect them and so you just need to remove enough that those cannot spawn in the river so just like that i am way over using sponges here because i'm in creative but you know how to remove water so that's not a problem so you want to move it out Remove it out to a total of 128 blocks, and you also want to now remove the water in the area that you're going to be using for the farm itself. 
And once you have done that, you can start laying out how the farm is going to work. Now, I haven't removed enough water around, I don't believe, but that's okay for the purpose of this tutorial. I just need to get this water to actually knock down. Water sources can be pretty strange how they flow, but there we go. So there we go, and this is the space that we are going to use for our farm. So, like I said earlier, mobs or squid can spawn from Y46 to 62. So you're going to see that the top block here right now where the water went to is 61. So this is a good place to start. And then you want to dig down to 46, and then you want at least a dozen blocks for the squid to fall as well. So I would say go down to at least Y34. If you want them to instant die, no matter where they fall from in the columns, you need to go down a full 24 blocks, but I don't see that as too much of an issue. So I am just going to remove this whole section of blocks very simply. You would dig down but I am in creative, so I said to go at least to 34, so air. And there you go, so this would be what you would be left with. Then you want to mark out where your columns are going to be in the top. So we're gonna mark opposites. Now I've actually done this box just smaller than it should be you want to go to the full width of the size that we did so let's just take out one more there we go so that includes everything so now we have full possibility for what we can do now what i would do is you want to place blocks at the top in a checkerboard pattern like this so that those are our water columns down at the bottom. And you can make this farm as big or as small as you like, but just like this, you place in the blocks. And then down at Y46, we would find Y46, look over on the left side, looking at block 47, looking at, wait, looking at block 46. So this is Y46. And we would find one of the open ones. So then that is where we want to start our fence gates. Now, sometimes the easiest thing to do here is to start with a platform here. So out like this, not take these blocks out yet so that you can place easier. But then you want to place these every other block in a checker pattern so that it matches your pattern up top just like this and if you open these you can move through them just like that and then you do want to make sure that they are all open and then of course in the opposite blocks to all of these we need our fence gates one level higher just like this just like that just like that there, 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 and there. So that is the first section of this complete. And then you just gotta make sure that they are all open. And then you can go up to the top. And as long as these are surrounded on all sides, remember, you can place in your water sources. So you could make this the entire size of this block here, or as big as you want to. Obviously, the more columns, the more efficient it's going to be. But now you place in your water sources, and they will fall down and go into the fence gates. And then you would come along and remove these blocks that were helping you out. And then this farm is functional. Once you go up to a height, I'm not sure if this is gonna work because of the water that I haven't removed. The squid cap is probably still taken up by out there. 
but we can see if some squid will spawn. No, I would have to take out more, more water. I bet you there's squid out there somewhere. But this farm is now 100% functional. So now what you would do is come down to the bottom and you can run a hopper minecart under a set of blocks. Or what I like to do is place hoppers going to any place that you like, just like this, like that. And there we go, just like this. And then you can leave them like that, or you can place slabs on it to make it look nicer because blocks can be picked up through slabs. So that is pretty much the entire farm complete, other than removing a bit more water. But uh, I will fill this completely out across here and remove the water just to show you how quick this farm actually is. So what I have done is I have removed the water out to the full distance in both directions. And as you can see, I have filled this out and also replaced the full blocks with fence gates instead. Uh, now you can also put the water sources in these ones, but I have found in my testing that it is faster without those water sources because they the squid actually drop quicker. Uh, now, as you can see, if I just move up, you will very quickly see these squids start to spawn. There they go. And they will very quickly fall out and fall down and die on the slabs down below. And their drops get collected here. Now, if you're too close, you can get salmon spawning in there as well. But if you're not, you just get ink sacks. And this farm, this is about 10 minutes worth of AFKing. And this farm can do, at this size, about 4,500 ink sacks an hour, which is an absolute ton for a single player world or even a multiplayer world. That is so much black dye. Here I am at uh, the full 64 blocks above the farm so that no salmon can spawn. And there you go. You can just see them spawning repeatedly and falling down. And if you look in the F3 menu where you see the water mobs, so S, C, M, C, A, and then W, you see the water mobs. And that is the squid. And you can see that number going up and down every time they fall and are crushed. And so this farm is totally complete as it is. And there you go. There's almost another stack in there already in under a minute. So this farm is super, super fast and so easy to build compared to the way that ink farms and, well, black dye farms used to be uh, when squid could spawn in a lot more places. So... This farm is complete. Let me know what you think and if you've built this up in your world. But that is going to be it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.